Hello and welcome to Tech Town. Tech Town. That's right, where you come for all things tech. I'm Mr. Ellsberg. I'm here with the Town Wizard. Town. We're on the season three, episode 14 of your favorite show, Tech Town. Today we're coming at you with HCI, also Ever known HCI. as HCI, <laughs> also known as Human Computer, computer. Interaction. interaction. Exactly. <laughs> How do we interact with computers? Beep, bop, boop, beep, beep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And it used to be this boring thing, like you had the keyboard or maybe yeah. a mouse. Right. Um, but no, no, no. It's way crazier than that. So we're beyond that now. Yeah, we're way beyond that. I mean, uh, we still do that sometimes. Just sometimes like for throwback reasons. Right. Yeah. You just know? you know, old school. You're like listen we're to listen to cassette tapes and type on your keyboard. Exactly. Um, not quite typewriter hipster though. Right. Um, actually, but so a typewriter is interesting because we're going to actually start back in the history of first when we interacted with the computer. Take it all back and then walk it through when all these things were sort of invented, which is way earlier than you'd think. There's this amazing video uh, in 1968 right. of this one computer science guy who right. basically invented it all and then couldn't quite nobody else could quite do it for like 20 years and then finally they started making it but he, he back in 68 ultimate uber pioneer he just had it yeah he had it all in his head and wow. we built it finally crazy um but yeah so let's take us ourselves back um back into the, the old day so this was a, a <laughs> by the way when, when you think of uh, human computer interaction a couple of mm. nice things that could uh, expand your mind on the subject right uh, are like minority report the movie yep. um that's a cool futuristic way of you know interacting with the computer you're swipe he was swiping his hands around yeah yeah, yeah. Um, with the all, screens and, like, yeah and it was kind of like the little gloves oh yeah this. exactly so that's a lot of like body and gesture based mm -hmm. uh, computer interaction um all the way to like stephen hawking right um which is less like movement it's just tiny little movement but because he's paralyzed and can't uh move he's able to with his mouth twitch yeah. certain muscles uh, to be able to actually control computers and write books and say what he wants to say. Right, incredible. So those are some examples. But um, I want to show you this uh, little, uh, I think it's a kind of a cool uh, graph, I guess you brief call it. Brief history. Um, yeah, a brief of history HCI. of the old HCI. Cool. So check it out. It's kind of a, a technical looking paper, uh, mm -hmm. and it can read pretty, te pretty technically, but pretty normal. Um, but I thought this graph was kind of cool. So check it out. Um, this is showing like a history of these different devices mm -hmm. of how we've uh, done manipulation with uh, computers. Okay. The first one, is, oh, and the, the different colors are university research, corporate research, or commercial products. Uh -huh. So you can see when people are researching versus when people are actually actually using them. Right. So here, the mouse, the second one. Let's just take that. The mouse. Okay, university research, 1965. All right. Wow. Wow. Okay, and then corporate research, and then finally, right around like 1980. Okay, we start using some mouse, and it goes on. This actually is written in 1996. Right. So that's why it stops there. Um, we got some Windows, like window, not necessarily yeah. Microsoft. Windows, but Windows, like user interface Windows, back in 19, what, 60, mm -hmm. they had these Windows. As, as an important note, I mean, you can see here the university is far and away ahead in each and every one, you know, except for probably gesture recognition. I guess so, ahead, yeah. Right? But absolutely, that's, I, yeah, I mean, that's Think about, spot. like, why it's important to have this higher education. Boom! Absolutely. Exactly. They're we, on the cutting edge. Exactly. We may not have had any of these uh, computer technologies without it, so. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. It kind of shows... Exactly, like you say, university, corporate to kind of user, and then some of them stop, like the mouse. Right. Apparently, no, we're done researching <laughs> the mouse. Over the mouse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, by 1970s, over, over at, at, the, at the university. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, so that's uh, the history. We actually go through a few different things, right? right. We, we have, uh, let's see, um, the direct manip manipulations of uh, graphical objects. Okay. Um, that's where you have like a pointing device like a light pen, mm -hmm. and you point at the thing on the screen, right. and you try to make it move. Okay. Um, then you got the mouse, and the mouse, actually, so there was uh, uh, at Stanford uh, and Xerox Park, they call it, was this research institute down there, and they just invented all this stuff. Wow. They were all about it. It was amazing. Crazy. Um, so let me just show you that uh, cool. Our boy Douglas Engelbart. Douglas Engelbart. He was the man. Okay. Um, oh, I guess I maybe won't show you the video, just in case. Um. Uh, YouTube. Uh, you YouTube, Google or, or you so guys, happy. yeah. Well, I have a link in the uh, in the show notes, and you can watch along uh, with us with yourself. Ah, never mind. Um, but what what this is? Let me show you like some of the mouse stuff that he's doing uh, at the beginning. Um, he's got like this cursor, like a little pointer, and he moves it around the screen, which is a screen that has text on the screen, mm -hmm. and he can like change stuff. He uh, changes the order of things. He's editing text. 
Um, this is in 1968. I don't know. I mean, I guess we're all young and we have all this already. But uh, the thing is, like, if you if you've seen computers, most of all of it is the text only. It's just right. that command line. He's got a mouse. He's got trees. He's got graphics. Um, so this guy, uh, they call it the mother of all demos. Because <laughs> he gave this, like, what is it, an hour long uh, presentation, hour right. and 40 minute long presentation wow. of all these things that over the next 40 years we're going to be slowly invented. And I mean, imagine if you're at that. I mean, that must have just been blowing your oh, mind yeah. or been so over your head that you would just, yeah, I, even, okay. I, don't even, I don't even know what any of this is going on. Exactly. Right what is a screen? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, they barely had screens. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, okay, so we got, yeah, you got your basic mouse and your keyboard. Mm -hmm. um, those have been pretty good. We can't underestimate them because right. they're actually fairly good. Yeah, so use them today. One fun fact about the keyboard, right? Uh, you'd think, why are the letters all arranged in the way that they are? Right. And then you'd think, okay, well, it must be it's the more efficient way to do it, right? The most efficient way, right? So if Incorrect. I, that's not correct at all. Right. Then why? Do you know? Is it because uh, the typewriter? Exactly. They get why all jammed. That? They get all jammed if you were able to tap, type super fast. Exactly, because the computer keyboard came from the typewriter keyboard. Right. Um, it's the same one, so they had the typewriters first. And the guy, and you're too fast. His name was Qwerty, right? Or no? Is the guy's name Qwerty? That's I don't know. Interesting. Could be a rumor. Could be. Yeah. Oh, I don't oh know. That's well, pretty, probably not. not because Q W E R T Y. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's a new hipster name. <laughs> um, so right, you're right. So it was, uh, you would type too fast and it would jam. So they actually spaced it out to be slower. Right. So then when it got to the computer, uh, they they adopted that because people were used to it. But one thing that's interesting is you can look at to the the Dvorak keyboards. Mm -hmm. That's a different arrangement of letters. Right. And it's actually meant to be really fast. So the people who can type on that can type faster wow. than our normal keyboard our, slow our human, type writer. Like, yeah. Slow hands. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah. even that. And then there's special gamer mouses. You know, people who play lots of video games mm -hmm. and really need precise mouse movement. They right. get special mouse oh, nice wow. mouses. Cool. Um, okay. So you got that. Uh, some other human computer interactions that we've got. Right. Uh, speech recognition. Yep. So, what things have you talked at that have then been robots that have done something? Well, a lot of times on uh, when I when I when I call up like my bank. Okay. You know. Oh and, yeah. And the and they say you know uh, say you know your social security number. Yeah, exactly. Or something like that. So uh -huh. I'll do those kinds of things. Uh huh. I mean, there's the voice command on your phone. Right. Like There's the also that the voice the voice texting that these come out on Google Docs, but yeah. they've had that out for a while. Yeah, but yeah, yeah Google's that sort of had stuff. Yeah. That little microphone button everywhere now. Mm -hmm. So you click the microphone, you can just say what you want. Very cool. Um, which is actually getting better in different ways. Yep. You know, for a while it was not very knowledgeable. So like maybe it could hear what you were sort of saying, but right. it wouldn't know what to do with that. Now it can right. do that well. Uh, for a while, it wouldn't be able to filter out background noise very well. Uh -huh. So you'd have to have only you, nobody else talking. It's like, getting better at that. Right. It's getting better at understanding grammar. So all these ways are actually now sort of useful. A while ago, they were a little rough. Now they're pretty good. Yeah. And then they've even got the like, the little bots that you could have in your uh, kitchen. That oh, you say, hey, to that. hey oh, yeah. order me a pizza. And that's I, and see, we I've I've messed with some of these. Okay. Uh, Alexa yes. is what the Amazon. Version, exactly. Yes. I know. Order you a Domino's pizza. It, yeah. Not only that, it'll do a lot more. Yeah, so you can get the weather. You can see what the temperature is in the house. Right. All this. Stuff. Uh, one thing, by the way, which is going to be incredibly fun. When it, so the 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 name of the product is called the Amazon Echo. Echo. Yep. And the keywords to make it start listening to you. Yep. Are Echo. I, or well, the first one is Alexa. Alexa, and then yeah. there's Echo. Or you can choose a couple others. Um, but so when we say this, if people are listening to this in a room yeah. that has one, and we say Alexa, uh, park the car in the garage, <laughs> uh, it, it, their bots are going to do it. So right. watch out for saying it because you already probably <laughs> messed up somebody's. Oh house. yeah, gotcha. Um, yeah. So that's kind of funny though because it's true. Like now we're going to have these bots listening, and yep. if you have somebody talking through the TV, the bot might listen. And right, you know that's the world we're in. Yep. Um, Okay, Alexa, send all your money to Tech Town. Yeah, Alexa, <laughs> what are the ingredients of chocolate chip cookies? And it probably was answering for the people. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, I wanted to bring up the Amazon Echo because that's actually breaking out as a really big uh, it's been a new user interface, really, yeah. is taking this voice thing and, and making it work in your house. Right, very cool. Um, okay, so those are some of the ways that we, oh, and I meant to say eye tracking. So oh, they have ways right. where they can track where your eyes are looking so that you can like look yeah, at the part of the screen that you want to click on and then you blink or things like that. Yeah, exactly. 
And uh, that sometimes could be easier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or if you don't have uh, the use of your, some of your hands, then you can uh, use eye tracking as a way to use right. a computer. Boom. Um, so, okay, so that's kind of on the side of like some of these ways of using these mm -hmm. computers. There's also differences in the computers themselves. Okay. And what are computers or what right. are we interacting right. with? Right, and we talked a little bit about that before. Yeah. How really a computer. Anything that oh, yeah. takes input and gives output. Right? Yeah, and that can be anything these days. I mean, it's, it's anything with a little chip in it. So the main ones that we remember are like desktop, mm -hmm. laptop, phone, mm -hmm. tablet, hybrid thing like it's phone and a tablet. So there's these different devices, and that's important to us. You right. know, you want a laptop because this certain reason. You right. want a phone that's mobile and a big screen or phone. Yep. You know, so all this stuff is about how you interact with these devices. Right. You also have a watch, like the Apple Watch, or yeah. uh, these wristbands. The, the Fitness bands, exactly, um, and things like your fridge, uh, your car, your car, exactly. All these things are now computers. So these ones that we thought of as computers mm -hmm. are now right, like you said, it's going to be just anything, right? Um, and so now, how do you interact with anything? And that's this new world we're finding ourselves in. Uh -huh. cool. um, so I also want to bring up uh, Stanford University has a, a human computer interaction uh, group uh, that's always at the forefront of all this. So it's really cool. You can go to their uh, website and you can see all their research projects that they've Full disclosure, worked on in the past. The Town Wizard is a Stanford grad. Oh yeah. So we like to be as unbiased as possible. Oh yeah, unbiased. Stanford's the best. <laughs> um, so check it out. Uh, this is the current projects from students this year. Yep. They have past projects, but they have all sorts of crazy stuff. Okay, so this current project, Myriad Hub, okay. uh, untangle complex Gmail threads and mail merge. Ooh. So apparently this is like for handling email. You know, you want to interact with it a little better. Okay, we well got all these threads. You know, sometimes this one person replies, and then this one person didn't quite reply until the later one, but it's the earlier one. Right, everyone's, like every, everyone's come to a thread, and all of a sudden there's like 500 messages on it, and they have exactly. no idea how to navigate. Exactly. Hmm. So they wanted to deal with that. Cool. Um, Another one I thought was kind of cool sounding was, uh, let's see, Voice for All. So it's voice-based social media for rural developing regions. So uh, you were mentioning the bank phone call thing. Imagine if it's a phone uh, number that you dial and right. you can talk, but it will tweet out for you. Whoa, um, that's cool. So it cool. kind of gives you options of what, maybe what you want to say. Right, which is important if you say, hey, there's a giant storm coming, yeah. or uh, don't drive on this road because there's been a landslide, something yeah. like that. Exactly, know? and there are places that have maybe the phone technology better than the internet yet. Right. Um, so, yeah, so there you go. Cool. Um, but this is cool because these are some student projects. They also have, like, the, the big thesis projects. Mm -hmm. um, they have videos that they talk uh, about all this cool stuff. So definitely a good resource um, if, you're, if you're interested in no, I'm on about that. Sweet. Uh, all right. So, um, VR and AR. So we talked Vern about R. Things, the old Vern R. Uh, virtual reality and augmented reality. Okay. And uh, we talked about this a little bit before. Mm -hmm. um, virtual reality is the one that totally covers your, your eyes right. when you're all in. Yep. And then augmented reality is you can still see through, but it's going to overlay on something. Right. It says, yeah, you have like a you have like a, a lens, basically, a lens, that you're right, seeing somewhere, the exactly. world through. Um, and uh, so those ones bring up a whole new way to then interact. Right. Right? So uh, here's a couple examples of the different devices and things that are out there. Mm -hmm. uh, you got Facebook's Oculus Rift, yep. which actually just came out. Whoa, it just came out. Yeah, huh? it's been out for sort of beta for right, a long time, right. but now I think it's out and you just buy it and it's there. Wow. Um, so if you have a ridiculously good computer that can power it <laughs> and you're going to drop six, seven hundred bucks on the Oculus Rift, then that's going to be awesome. <laughs> um, but I haven't actually seen the way that you sort of navigate around. Like there's obviously games and you right. sort of navigate around and that's one version of right. human computer interaction. I'm also kind of curious, how do you choose games? Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll, I'll uh, show you actually a, a little video of how that goes and how there's this new way of using your desktop, like mm -hmm. you know Windows or Mac or whatever, but in virtual reality. Um, so you got Oculus Rift. Uh, Microsoft has their HoloLens. It's not out yet, but it's the one that's augmented reality. It has this glass that you can see through, but then it projects things. Uh -huh. um, you've got Google. Google has a few different things they did. Right. They did Google Glass. Yep. Um, which uh, it, it was kind it's, of so exciting it's, yeah, for a while. It was basically the, uh, the it was just one little glass guy that came. It was attached to like glasses looking things, yeah. but it was the one little lens, mm -hmm. and it looked like you're like a little cyborg. Mm -hmm. And uh, it didn't quite come out, and they got a lot of hype, but then people kind of hated on it a lot. Yeah. Um, I think though they're going to come back with it, but yeah. uh, interesting. 
they had a whole operating system and how you would sort of choose between cards right, right. and you things. You could take pictures and you could film and stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, then you had Google Cardboard. Google yeah. Cardboard's funny because it's a little cardboard and you just put the phone up close to your face and yeah. you just look at it and you're cardboarding. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, there's the Gear. The Galaxy Gear is okay. a virtual reality by Samsung. Okay. Um, and that runs on Android, but it's also, uh, you know, you're in the world. Now these virtual things, you got to figure out, how am I going to uh, right. grab things? Um, so HTC has the Vive. Okay. That's actually a, supposed to be a really great one. So the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive are kind of the big competitors now for virtual reality. Okay. Um, and you're playing crazy games and you're skydiving and everything. Uh -huh. um, but these ones have controllers. So you ah. kind of in your hands have these controllers while you're in the virtual reality so that you can be pressing buttons, mm -hmm. doing some things. Um, the HTC Vive has these cameras that come with it you have to put in your room. Oh. So you can kind so of walk get around your a little bit. Exactly, yeah. your motion. Okay. So these these new total environments, how are you going to actually you know grab something or right. move or whatever? So uh, so here, check out this uh, virtual desktop. Okay. So this is imagine you're in virtual reality land, and you going deep. want to actually use your computer, like mm -hmm. you know Windows or whatever. Okay. You can like look around Whoa. at this crazy space. <coughs> You're looking around at the weird space, and then there's sort of the screen in front of you. Uh -huh. um, but it's cool because you can have like flat or curved. Uh, if you want to have multiple monitors, you like add another one to the right of it. You can make like the movie wow, theater room, nice. different rooms, like you're in a movie theater now, uh -huh. and then screens up there. Like that. Um, you can, cards. yeah, exactly. Oh. Play some. Uh, what is this? World of Warcraft. It's like World of Warcraft. Uh, yeah. Um, in virtual reality. So these are games that aren't made for virtual reality. Right. These are, you know, you're just your computer, you're using your computer. You can surf the web uh, in this manner. Okay, um, now we're talking. All right, so we're in arches. Now, this now. is a little more like the traditional virtuality, right. but what they're showing is that you can uh, make any of your own photos uh, into virtual reality. Oh, so, that's awesome. Yeah, exactly. So this is a new way that we're going to basically walk around and Amazing. tour places. Cool. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, let's see. Like that? We got, um, oh, and Windows, uh, for their uh, HoloLens, they're trying to figure this out, too. So they call a version of, the new version of Windows that's going to come out for this Windows Holographic. Okay. Uh, and it's going to let you have holograms around, is what they call them. So, like, you know, your email might be sitting on this table. Oh, so you, you have to pick it up. Yeah, and then you just, it's always there. And you kind of pick up your email and you read your, or your, uh, and then you, your TV screen, which isn't actually a screen, it's just on your little lenses, always right. goes there and you kind of move things around. So they have a way that they're going to have you work with Windows on your dome piece. Very cool. Um, okay, and like I mentioned, uh, how are you going to interact with this stuff? Some of them are body cameras, mm -hmm. some of them are controllers. One thing I thought was fun is the treadmill. Okay. So what if you're wanting to like move forward or backward? Nice. You know, like yep. in other space, not just move your hands around. Right. Um, here, let me uh, share the screen. Um, so what this this company invented is like a treadmill sort of thing, uh -huh. and that means you can feel like you're walking around Whoa, on, nice. in virtual reality. Right. So check it out. It's this crazy, oh, but you become an <laughs> ultimate virtual wizard uh, when you're actually just a nerd. <laughs> um, but uh, so yeah, you walk here. You walk on this, like, roller sort of thing. Okay. Yeah, you got to get emotional about it first before you actually show people oh. looking goofy. Show the actual thing, yeah. But it, it's in this uh, harness, so you can twist, you can walk, and then it's actually hooked up to the game, too, right. so that it knows how much you're walking. Wow. So, uh, yeah, they're going to have to have ways that, now that we've unlocked the entire world in our eyes, that we can look around, you're going to want to be able to interact, move, so they're still trying to figure that out. Well, that is super cool. It is. Let, are, I mean, are you going to get one? Or yeah, what? I mean, the future is here. <laughs> the future is here. Yeah. Um, okay, one more time I wanted to mention Amazon Echo okay. because you brought it up. And I think that is the sneaky underdog of the future. Yeah. I think that sort of thing is going to be built into everywhere, and we are going to start talking to our house. It's really nice because, you know, every once in a while you just think, oh, what's, you know, you'll just have a question that pops in your head. Mm -hmm. and we're like, oh, I can Google it. Well, why don't you just say it? Yeah, why don't you, you know? Why don't you just ask it into the ether? Into the ether, and that's kind of what you do right. in this in this sort of situation. Is you just have it set up in the kitchen or living right. room or whatever. And you just say, "Hey, I mean, how many how many how many little babies can a uh, kangaroo have at one time? It can have right four babies." Alexa, thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. No, you're totally right. And when I when I first heard about this, I 
was a little irked because I felt like, don't we already have this with Siri and with Google? And you can even, instead of, like, maybe the difference is the difference it takes to take it out of your pocket and press the button right. or say, hey, Siri. I think it actually is that, mm -hmm. but that difference is huge. Right. So I think, right, Google can do a lot of that stuff. Yeah. It's not like they can't do that. I mean, maybe even more than the right. Amazon thing. Right. Um, so I, I find it kind of weird when people say. I, I feel like it's that package. You don't have yeah. to, you can be totally right. removed totally from it. Totally removed. You can, be, you can be someone that doesn't know anything about any kind of right. technology. And right. you could have it in your bedroom and say, hey, set an alarm for 7 o'clock tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks, Alexa. Exactly. Boom. And then it's like that. I mean, you don't you need a phone or anything like that. Right. And for a lot of people, like. Uh, my parents would then just a lot of people that I met they don't want to be near a cell phone they don't want a smartphone mm. because it scares them mm -hmm. and there's all these mm -hmm. uh, the whole the whole format I mean if they watch Tech Town <laughs> they wouldn't be scared they wouldn't be nervous it's true, yeah, it's true. yeah they start to own it but uh, the, you know that's a big that's a big group and just having to take out one more step is that's a big so group. here's what's interesting those people that are a little worried about technology okay now you're replacing a smartphone with a thing that's listening oh, to you all the time. yeah you got a robot in your house it's gonna be listening it's oh, gonna become its own yeah. artificial intelligence it's and it's true. gonna, just it's gonna take, take over. over so hey which one which <laughs> way you want the robots to take over true um Okay, okay, so all the human-computer interaction that we've been talking about so far is like the stuff that you know that is happening. Right. But there's also, all, I don't even think they call it human-computer interaction, but I think it's important, which is all the stuff that we don't even know or think about that's happening. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so, like, for example, we're being tracked on the web when we right. go to websites, so we're sort of interacting with all these other companies, but we don't really know it. Right. Uh, another example is uh, physically, uh, when you walk around, there's eye beacons. Apple has these eye beacons uh -huh. in like retail stores and their mm -hmm. Apple stores and other stores um, where they can track your phone, that you're moving around their space, so they can triangulate where you're actually standing. Right. Um, and so you're sort of interacting with computers by walking around, but you just don't know it. Right. Um, another one is uh, wearables. Sometimes it's actually a little more on purpose is that you wear these things, like a, a heart rate monitor or a, a pedometer, these things where it's, you're interacting with it, but you don't know it. You know, you're yeah. just doing the thing you were doing, but it's actually interacting. Yep. Um, or face recognition. You know, I, I have a feeling there's a lot of uh, whether it's government surveillance or whatever face recognition going right. on. There's a lot of meshing that picks up on your <laughs> your credit cards. Yeah. As well. So you're interacting exactly. Yeah, it's just so. you don't really know. Yeah. So watch <laughs> out for that. Um, and last but not least, the future of human computer interaction. Sweet. You know, instead of all this talking, that's oh. so much work. Mind control. Nice. So <laughs> there already is, and there will continue to be mind ways of mind controlling computers. Sweet. Uh, people can move around in wheelchairs. They they can sort of have their minds read in uh -huh. simple ways. Um, and so in the future, you're just going to be sitting there thinking, I want the computer <laughs> to do this and that and this. And, yeah. Uh, no need to move a muscle. Exactly. Yeah, you don't even think that hard. It's just no. already happening. It's probably already right happening. When it, right when it pops in your head, it's, it's probably already doing it. pop in your head at that point. <laughs> so uh, yeah, get ready. There actually it are things for you. Uh, yeah. So when that's that's the future. This no long, It's just CI yeah. computer <laughs> interaction. <laughs> um, so the thing is, there's a lot of actually really good research and stuff going on with mind control too. So right. like it's it's happening. Right. So just know that human computer interaction went from never existing because there was no such thing to, okay, wow, what is this new thing? Mm -hmm. To, okay, let's be more efficient with it. Right. To, oh my gosh, what is this? <laughs> yeah, you know, now it's, it's you're all in, you're all I'm in. all in, let's just be as natural as possible. And <laughs> Act natural. Really, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right, all sorts of things around human computer interactions. Check it out, check out some of the links if you're interested below. Which brings us to our mo 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 music. <laughs> Um, excellent. So the music uh, side of the week this week is ObeyTheCaptain.com. ObeyTheCaptain.com. And ObeyTheCaptain.com is uh, a pirate band of the likes of which ye have never been seen. Right, well, you should. I mean, if you were up at uh, Mount Hood this last week and uh, at the Skyway, you would have seen them. It's true. You would have seen them. Uh, you would have seen a grand pirate ship, uh, a, a plank. <laughs> which actually Mr. Ellsberg himself walked. That's right. Um, got called out. It's true. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that's our pirate band. Uh, we dress up like pirates. We play pirate rock. We play dinosaur music. And we just have a good old time. Beautiful music. 
It is, yep. more or less. Buy a bunch of pirates. Yeah, so uh, go ahead and check out ObeyTheCaptain.com. We've got a few little pictures. Uh, i got to update it to say where we're playing next. Uh -huh. um, we've got a few songs you can check out um, right. for free there. And go ahead and uh, give us an email if you want. So uh, check us out. Uh, we have a lot of fun playing some crazy pirate jams. Sweet. That's right. Which brings us to... Oh, security. <laughs> security segment of the week. Um, okay, so this this is actually, I thought, one of the coolest security, like, educational things out mm. there. Like, it'll help you learn about uh, simple things, but also really complex things about, like, hacking. They call it hack explaining. Hacks so go to hacksplaining.com nice. and it'll tell you about like learning to hack, learning to protect yourself. Because it actually is kind of the same thing. Nice. If you know how to hack, that's how you know what to protect yourself against. Right, right. So if you know how to break into your house, you know how to board up your house so it can't exactly. be broken into. Exactly, same thing. So they have a few free lessons just right there you can choose. So uh, there are these things that sound kind of complicated. SQL injection or click jacking. Session fixation. Some of these things are actually very used to be complex issues. Um, XML bombs. These are more more if, if you're a computer programmer, let's mm -hmm. say, than if you're the average person. Right. Um, but still useful, I'd say. You know, there's password management, this sort of thing. Very cool. So what you do is you click on it, and then it really takes you through step by step of what is actually going on. So click jacking. What is it? How could it happen? Click jacking is a method of tricking website users into performing an unintended action by fooling them into clicking on something they did not intend. Nice. Okay. okay. So what's that or why? And then it's like, okay, well, there's this video. It's like, oh, the cutest video and the kitty. Now, let's say the hackers want you to like steal clicks um, and uh, what that can do. So they'll slap on something on top of it right. that looks like it's that, and you can go through all these steps. And then, okay, now when you click on it, oh, boom, it takes you to their website, their bad, um, right. bad website or something. And then they can actually try it. So you can try clicking jacking, and they talk about how you prevent against it. Um, it they do get a little technical here, right. but if you're ever thinking of making a website, right. um, these are all really important things to know. So Very cool check stuff. it out. That's right. Protect yourself and get explained to, Explain right? Explain it. Because you don't always have the tech town, your tech town, here to explain that to you, so True. you know. Not always. Yeah, we got a place for you to do that too at Hacksplaining. Hacksplain. That's right, we talked about HCI, we talked about cabins orders. Yeah. And go Hacksplain yourself. We'll see you here next week on Tech Town. Tech Town.